All right, so returning again. Had to take care of some household uh, details. So I was talking about the church. I was allowing my thoughts to roam through the church. Um, and this is kind of a, a, a part of um, the strike point protocol is that sometimes we end up giving a lot a whole lot of material uh, which may be which may be redundant uh, uh, or how whatever um, so but it's really good to to actually just express things um, so I'm noticing uh, or as as expected um, some good opportunities and some good parallels here for uh, for my exploration of the church in uh, in parallel with uh, an exploration of the model or of the, the guild um, so what I call uh, uh, the the guild uh, basically I'm referring to the same thing as the church <coughs> and when I say the church I'm talking about not the buildings but um, most importantly the people uh, and the, the the church as it's built in the heart of of people and out of relationships and yeah so so these relationships these are these are built um, these are internalized internal memory um, <clears throat> I guess corresponding and interacting with the external and with things that uh, outside of the this the sense of, of conscious the, the consciousness and its senses. The perception of reality. So I'm going to continue carrying on through. Uh, just talking about issues in the church and um, already we can probably start to to relate or see how we could how we could look at uh, our idea of what a, a general proximity guild is uh, in relation to uh, what we've been calling uh, a small group I, I think this is a common term a common church term a common Christian term uh, a small group uh, which is simply a gathering of two or more uh, in the name of Jesus <laughs> so um, so this is essentially like like the idea of a fundamental guild um, so you have in it at in it this this teaching mechanism and this uh, this hyperstition of the journey through coherence uh, you're seeing it unfold you're using a model to allow it to unfold uh, you're using um, these materials, material expressions, uh, in conjunction in the, in the context of a relationship potentially, uh, or multiple relationships and different degrees of, of commitment, and and a whole whole s swamp of a stew of uh, of what we find when we iterate the the database. Uh, so this would be like a dashboard or a deck deck protocol. And so, um, again, getting back on some of the topics in the church. So we have, we, we're going to see human, uh, normal social human behaviors in, in the world as we do in the church. Um, the only difference is in the church there's a higher concentration of participants. That is a higher concentration of people who claim to be uh, following Christ, who claim to be a disciple of Christ, and are actively willing and seeking uh, um, practice <clears throat> so that's kind of an ideal that's an isomorphic or idealistic description of participant um, again so we have a ignorance and uh, and stagnation uh, potentially happening uh, when we don't keep uh, keep pushing our, our boundaries and keep pushing our growth 
into new and uncomfortable areas that we never knew about um, to uh, to serve God in the way that he's calling us to allow that to allow the space for the spirit to move um, so this is necessary a necessary part of participation and again I'm, I'm coming back to that kind of uh, commitment to the journey of coherence or whatever um, the commitment to increasing isomorphism um, it's kind of a driving a very driving or important um, counterpoint you could say to the pure potentiality which we unleash with the concept of emptiness so we have this this kind of counterpoint to that uh, which is that the path of life is narrow The path to death is uh, in all direction. Uh, we're kind of talking at, at least, at the very least, about uh, entropy here as a fundamental archetype. Kind of like a gravity of things continually just falling away, falling apart. That's what we are. That's what we are in, and uh, we tread water so that we live, so that we continue to be here, and we continue to experience uh, perception of consciousness. Our perceptions of reality. <coughs> so. Um, so a ma major problem, therefore, uh, so in the church we simply have a higher percentage of, of professed uh, participants. And I mean, you got to acknowledge to some degree that if, if somebody says they're spiritual, like if, if they are seeking God but they don't believe in, they don't know what God or who God or whatever, um, the problem is that this the symbol sets have different varying qualities and uh, some of them uh, I mean very often it's quite easy to tell if something is is selfish or and or otherwise evil um, as far as a system you're presented with you don't have to do it it's just this is what you're being asked to do or shown um, of course there is a whole world of, of deception out there um, <clears throat> so it's kind of something that you need to activate your inner guide as the kind of ultimate say of things uh, the ultimate judge and that that guide and your ability to commune with that guide so to speak is uh, is, uh, is along the the journey of coherence as well increasing So I've been trying to set up how the the church is basically like the world, except a little bit different. Um, and you see, so one one of the challenges with the church then is um, this. Uh, so it, um, in the Bible, it's described uh, by Christ as uh, uh, lukewarm behavior. So when, in other words, it's, it's where it's claimed, one claims to follow the law, but um, they get stuck there, they stop, they stop moving forward, they stop um, advancing their, their spiritual journey, uh, and get stuck in comfort, in, in the comfort of pattern following law, and um, so... It, Eventually, I mean, you get hypocrisy out of this because all that's possible at the participation uh, degree of coherence is a basically what amounts to a, an emulation or a copycatting or whatever, a cop, an attempted copy of behavior based on a very simplistic model. This is how you copy any behavior. You get a you simplistic model and then you run an experiment. You see what happens if I try to do this and uh, see how it works for you.
notice where the model is failing, where the model is creating dissonance, where you're not getting the results that you want. Um, adapt this. So I know it's a lot, it, that's a lot to ask, um, but just it has to be known that um, sure participation is, is the majority in almost any case anywhere and that's probably the way it's it's going to be um, but again people so participation is not to be uh, looked down upon this is this is people making noble choices to uh, increase their coherence to, to in other words come closer to God um, to love themselves their neighbors um, <clears throat> So these are so participation that that commitment, it in itself, if if it's if it's a pure heart uh, type of commitment, um, then, well, that's another thing. Um, at participation, we're kind of in the mindset of. Uh, um, Of you're you're doing this for for selfish reasons, which isn't isn't even necessarily a bad thing. It's just that's your the perspective that you're in. Um, you're not going to necessarily do anything unless it seems good for you. Um, and this is just kind of a typical perspective. Not saying that anybody can't consider others, but this is um, this is the reason for picking up any particular skill or going into any particular domain of behavior. Um, so it's it's to uh, mm. so it's a big problem in the church where participants are attempting the job of membership and above. Um, so uh, this just happens with uh, when coherence goes low enough, uh, you just have in positions of leadership um, people who are not, uh, don't appear to be responding uh, to the spirit, um, who um, Who, well, breach constraint. Breach constraints. You notice it. You see them do it. Um, that's it. This is uh, this is kind of so. In, in a Christian terminology, this would be like uh, grieving the spirit. When the spirit is grieved, you can you can sense it. You feel it. Uh, you you kind of know what's right and wrong. Uh, and there's this extra sense that's awakened, so to speak, of just the the whole depth of of any situation into its uh, concrete implications and anyway so the the church has a has has a it um, a lot of potential and a lot of issues in my experience um, I've only gone to one church for a couple of years now um, and like I said I'm pretty sure that any church you go to you're, you're basically going to find same kind of general mix and, and certain certain things. Um, I do plan to to kind of reach out to other churches to see if any churches actually have their shit together so that I can see uh, like good models so that I can can uh, um, see what kind of information they have to support, uh, for example, their their small groups, how they work together, how they function together whether there is any kind of cross-pollination between uh, the small groups. Um, like, what is the, the convergence? Like, as far as... Um, well, I, I guess especially just considering a, a convergence on uh, the degrees of coherence. Um, so, like, whatever is necessary for that. That's kind of the important... That's a, a focus, for sure. Um... So yeah, it'd be nice to find or to explore different churches and see what their kind of um, pros and cons or what, what their specialty is, you could say, or what, what they're good at. Um, 
like you, I'm sure you'll just find a whole a different spread of different attributes no matter what church you go to but you'll probably see a lot of the same patterns um, again uh, getting back to some issues that, that I've seen that I've personally experienced and, and seen uh, happen um, to others um, just and, and it's nothing that the spirit can't break through that nothing that the Holy Spirit cannot break through um, and so I, I don't I don't think I I would uh, I I don't think that I can go into a lot into any detail about um, any kind of specifics <coughs> um, just because uh, people from my church may may read read or listen to this um, and. <coughs> The point isn't isn't personal. It's kind of just like things that you'll see everywhere. Um, so yeah, yeah. Um, so that's why it's going to be a tough topic because I don't I don't want to bring up any specifics. But really, what I'm one of the things I'm trying to do here is is to be uh, concrete. Um, so. Um, I'm really glad that our our church has started up a uh, cut, like has a, actually assigned people to a small group ministry leadership. Um, someone's assigned to that, and so in our church we are starting to uh, survey the groups and uh, see how if their needs are being met and. Um, I myself as well have been working on uh, similar protocols in my small groups um, just to make sure that people feel like they're getting what they what they need out of it um, if they feel like they need to speak meta about the uh, proximity guild or a small group <coughs> um, it's good to have that that type of opportunity um, Yeah, so, uh, what are we at here? 20 minutes in. <clears throat> so I'm st still kind of just browsing through the church here. Um, I did bring up addiction already. I wanted to get into that, and as well as uh, this kind of law-based mentality mindset. Um, and how, how that's alienating and how that can be that can be a problem too so just a challenge I've encountered um, when I admitted to smoking marijuana and that it it was uh, really bad for me at, at a time um, just uh, daily uh, usage and as well as uh, most importantly letting my life get so disorganized and and out of out of control that I wasn't uh, taking care of myself and taking care of things and my wife and my household um, so really bad in that way that that's what I uh, actually the last couple of years I've um, I've been broken of that the the habit or will or desire to uh, to use smoking as an escape as a any kind of even short term medium term long term uh, escape um, that was broke about a year ago, uh, a year and a half ago, even. <clears throat> and so it, it's been it's been kind of challenging with me because we, uh, you you'll find this in in churches this where uh, you'll set up an accountability partner, and make some kind of commitment, and then they will try to hold you accountable. So as you can imagine, uh, this is an externalization of an organ. So this is an example of crutch protocol, uh, but externalization of an organ which should be uh, within your control. Uh, the, the skill, in fact, it's, it's a skill accountability is. Um, so that's really, whenever we're talking about accountability relationships, we're focusing on developing our own accountability. 
That's the key. And you can help people by providing a crutch sometimes. Um, but, uh, yeah, behaviors need to change as well. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, gets into um, repentance uh, and forgiveness, which is another kind of essential thing to just... Um, Yeah, it's really difficult. So, um, I don't know if I could. I don't know if if I could get through this uh, quickly. <clears throat> well, anyways, I smoked for fifteen years uh, marijuana, and I realized after some time, after a long time, that I was using it uh, to kind of avoid uh, growth in certain areas of my life uh, which uh, in particular uh, I guess dealing with, with trauma of my past of, uh, of just these feelings of alienation and powerlessness and, and all kinds of things that go along with the system which I was intuiting and uh, very intelligently seeing but having no way of expressing or talking about or identifying <coughs> um no way to talk about it, especially uh, until I, um, I suppose, got into phenomenology, because um, I think that's easily, that's relatable, because you can speak directly into, uh, you can have somebody run an experiment to compare a model that you provide them with their, their direct lived experience uh, in, of that. Uh, particular, in particular models of perception, which you're seeing if they model your actual perception uh, through your perception. Yeah, these last five years have been quite a journey, quite a trip. Um, just figuring out this, what, what happened to me on that beach that summer day in Kelowna, BC. Should I give my testimony? It's kind of a Christian thing to do. Um, so this is this is a building of faith in the uh, like this is a great way of of building faith in a in a particular uh, system, I guess you could say. <clears throat> um, So testimonies, I guess, are, are part of what you would say, what you would call welcoming. So welcome protocol of a proximity guild. Anybody new should be treated as a master uh, and with respect and and uh, uh, joy, whatever, <laughs> whatever you're feeling. Good, good times.
Mm -hmm. It's really spectacular or narrative narrative material to kind of ponder on. Uh, in its ways, should be understandable to anybody. Um, but a testimony is just a relaying of experience of something, something that happened to you. Um, it, I mean, you could, you could even say like, uh, like how we, uh, in the case of our capitalist society, where you have a product which somebody had a good experience, or otherwise you pay them to, uh, to give a good report. So a testimony in the uh, meta uh, religion sense. A testimony is your experience that uh, your experience of the divine. Um, just what you know. Just share, share what you know. Um, but uh, again, so. Co coherence and, and the journey of coherence is a very subjective thing at which you you participate in you are you're participating in your own becoming or your own changing so I probably can, can or should just sum this up because I'm sure uh, a lot of it is actually uh, better uh, caught up with or read by just looking at my uh, oeuvre protocol, I think that's how you pronounce it, whatever, uh, on uh, medium.com. There's a... Uh, I have a uh, one of my one of my published articles is simply like an index page for uh, two different s writing series that I did. Uh, one just a few months, actually about half a year after uh, after it happened to me, and then another one just ending a couple years ago. Not ending, but really pausing. <clears throat> Maybe I could consider it ending. Uh, if this is not simply another article added on to that, which I was expecting, uh, it's now already way longer, and we're we're in book territory, <coughs> uh, which is great. So I can skip a lot of that in my testimony. The testimony of what happened to me, my experience, a relaying of my experience. <clears throat> um, which would definitely, I think, give uh, certain confirmations to people as well as... Um, <clears throat> as well as just a better general context of, of, of why and how it came to this book. Or whatever this media expression is anyways what I just said right now I'm here because of what happened to me then um, <clears throat> so let's just say I had a you could say a life of chronic stress of, of at least low grade but always consistently there stress um, social type things uh, with this uh, guilt and all through my life I never did homework I'll just give that one example uh, and it was always late if it was mandatory things like that and I always just barely passed the test because uh, I never I didn't want to do the extra work and I thought it was all uh, I wasn't learning how I wanted to, to learn I wasn't being taught how I expected to I was being uh, forced to copy and repeat things arbitrarily uh, without um, simply setting up experiments to refine and uh, um, refine my APS, my reality, to, to go to, to search my um, um, <laughs> I was going to say to search my philosopher's stone into any 
particular facet of reality. Um, but I didn't want to get into talking about that and uh, what I kind of, <clears throat> I guess, theorize as a Philosopher's Stone. I don't know if it's concretely understood what it is I don't by people. I don't think so. Um, but anyways, I don't really want to get into that. Um, it's essentially what we're pointing at right here. Right here, right here, right here now. Um, so, this was uh, five years ago. Um, I was getting into a another cycle of a lot of stress. Um, just mounting work on top of me, writing articles for Bitcoin. So I, I was working for a bank at the time, uh, tech support. And I was just following this rabbit hole of what is the most evil thing. Um, who is controlling, who is pulling the strings, who is the puppet master. Just like trying to track down society and see what all the shit's about. Um, later on I referred to this, uh, this, this uh, reality tunnel as uh, the gauntlet of fear. And you kind of have to pass through it. Eventually you realize that um, it's not like you are going to find out uh, who's doing what. Uh, this is the problem of crypto power. Uh, power is so crazily hit from each other that uh, you can never figure out its source. Alright, so I'm back. I just had to take a quick break there. Um, so, uh, we left off at the Gauntlet of Fear. Oh yes, yeah, so... Um, we'll say I was at like a peak or a height of, of, of stress, even acute stress. I was writing for Bitcoin, uh, some magazines, uh, Bitcoin-related type crypto articles, um, and <clears throat> so this, some reflections uh, of this event happened to me about, I think maybe even four or five months prior where I just kind of saw my own life, uh, just stretch out across time, like into its history. Like I saw my own self somehow I had a visual, like a hallucination or a visual, uh, or just like a ma wild imagination takeover of like my own body, my own self sitting there. And I was kind of, it's because I was kind of intentionally, uh, meditating like just thinking about myself or like about life like just having a, a think about life moment um, and I saw all these uh, this past this history this whole chain going back chain of causality kind of back through time just in a visual of myself stretching out like an accordion <clears throat> so anyways this event I was on a beach uh, with my wife um, and as far as I recall, I was standing up and just looking at the sky. I can't even tell you if that's if that's it because I pretty much left my body uh, in this type of a uh, imagina imaginatory or revelatory or whatever uh, like uh, <clears throat> I guess just like captive visual like like I was just really seeing into into seeing this and just and just exploring it and so anyways what I was what I was seeing was not just my own self and my past but the past present and future of of everything of everything of all possibility all potentiality uh, through time <clears throat> and so uh, like even down to the quantum level of decisions and and um, the potential to, si to signal and affect one another um, and just this totally like infinite fractal just going infinite everywhere um, but in a in so I saw all of this in a solid crystalline form it, a shimmering crystal <clears throat> um, and this was this was all past present and future this was the this was time I was seeing outside of time so I was seeing the universe outside of time um, so I myself had a perception of being outside of time 
and so it wasn't your it wasn't your your average daydream um, we'll put it like that my life changed on the spot um, like it's it's basically like you can't you can't just come back from seeing that from like not just like vis- hallucinating something but like deeply deeply visualizing and experiencing uh, the truth of something uh, so yeah like that that was to the core of my experience uh, of like truth right there um, so um, so however whenever I came to and and just kind of carried on like I just kind of I guess shook my head and just kept carrying on uh, whatever maybe go for a swim go back go home um, we ended up going on a, a houseboat uh, kind of vacation with uh, with our family, my dad and, and others. Um, uh, brothers, sisters, all kinds of family. Uh, anyways, so that that beach that I stood at is where I died. Um, like who I who I identified with who I who I was my worries concerns my uh, so-called reality tunnel or whatever um, my goals my plans my all the the shame and guilt maybe that I that I held from from expectations from people from others just my whole con- my whole collection my whole bunch of experiences and um, all of this which which made my identity which made me who I am um, that I even my name itself to identify with a sequence of symbols to identify with that all of this um, cracked and crumbled the foundation from under it um, just crumbled and vanished Um, and then you've got this meme and you're, you're reprocessing like your whole brain of experiences. Um, you go, you have to go through a lot of kind of reprocessing, processing, getting through and getting over. Um, although I felt normal, I knew something was completely different and, um, me being introverted, it was strange when we were at the store and I bought a pair of pink pants um, so this is just, again, this is part of the, this is part of my story, my testimony. Um, I am not the type of person who would ever in his life ever buy a pair of pink pants. So you could say this was one of the f- most first, uh, experiments that I, you could say ran, uh, to try and verify or confirm or figure out what actually happened to me. And in that act and in, in the, um, uh, even enjoyment on occasion of wearing pink pants um, it is it is confirmed that um, indeed the same person did not walk off of that beach as the one who did walk onto it um, so that's that's what I that's my spiritual rebirth event um, <clears throat> and it it was not easy to deal with its consequences so it's kind of like opening Pandora's box maybe Uh, there's so many unknowns and surprises in store Um, of course as anybody else who is a member of the guild would attest uh, they wouldn't trade their membership for anything But so uh, this this dichotomy between ma- mania and depression, uh, this feeling like anything is possible and the feeling like nothing is possible, um, that's that's kind of a pattern that I experienced pretty heavily in my so last five years and 
the first year was really bad, up up and down, uh, mostly down, uh, and then like it's been getting it's been getting a lot better. And even in the last couple of years, like e- everything is kind of really smoothed out. Uh, in my experience, I've been able to figure out some certain things. I've been able to express certain things. Uh, that's really satisfying for me to communicate to people and to uh, to do work that's glorifying of God, so to speak. So, at the time, as I said, I worked at at, uh, at a bank doing tech support, uh, com- uh, the help desk, computer help desk, um, and so within the first six months, things were like, I was on a definite high, like I was given, I was shown so much light. Um, and it was just so new and and fresh to me, like to experience, uh, the spirit, um, that I was like, I was experimenting, testing, enjoying. And then, um, not too long after I, I started to, to realize that I, I had no way of expressing this of what happened to anybody, uh, because Again, I had no spiritual background or spiritual commitments or any kind of spiritual community. Um, and, you know, people who are spiritual, I mean, getting our shit together is very difficult. Um, t- to actually being engaged in, in the guild um, and in, intentionally, um, so supporting these kind of general proximity guilds. It's very tough. <clears throat> so not being able to express what happened to me it ended up being one of the first main, like, big pains uh, that kind of started getting me down. I almost... I destroyed at the time my relationship with my mom uh, just because I was trying to explain that something happened to me and I'm I'm different and uh, you know and, and she's not where I'm at and we're not at the same place you know like if you just start rambling like this um, it can get very traumatic very fast um, so thankfully I um, she's been coming around like oh yeah even at the time it was great like we're we're still good it was just shaky but um managed to patch it up like anyways not it didn't get that out of hand um but now that i'm able to express better to her uh, she's really turned around as, as far as participation in the guild uh which is awesome <clears throat> and So, this is, we're talking about the first six months here, Um, because after the first six months, that's where I quit my job, because I couldn't handle, um, I couldn't handle any more of of not knowing what happened to me, and having no way of knowing, and no, like, no contact, or no connect to, like, I didn't think that I could just go into a church and talk about this, like, I I thought that I, um, really 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 um the odds of just knowing the the experience i had how kind of like um a lot has come in my path been in my favor to for that to happen uh even i'm thankful for all of the the suffering through my life 
<clears throat> um, just in the sense that um, if you have too little, you're too comfortable, you get into that crusty participation. If you have too much suffering, then obviously uh, you can't focus even or do anything and you, you become really, uh, you have to peel away the layers and layers um, to get back to a sort of healthy um, <clears throat> so anyways this expressing has been uh, very satisfying for me um, and that's one of the first things that I did I was writing so at first I started doing videos and then writing um, <clears throat> just trying to make things happen they, they were kind of like really just experimental and grounded and, and trying to reach out and just trying to make as much noise and splash as I could to, to attract anybody or peop, other people who may know what I'm talking about or like you know <laughs> just doing something something to, to advance and to, to keep going and something to keep sharpening sharpening my, my sword against um <clears throat> So yeah, that was the first year, and uh, so spending a lot of time in my basement, uh, smoking, smoking weed just to deal with this shit even more. Like, cause I, uh, um, yeah, it's been it's been waves and waves and cascades of revelations uh, throughout the years. Uh, many, many uh, in the in the earlier time, and then just kind of slowly uh, coming to a center and the sort of uh, paradigm shifts or level breaking or leveling up or whatever uh, slows down <clears throat> so then about two years ago um, when we went on our trip across Canada when my wife and I went uh, and I wrote the last writing piece. When we came back, we went to church. And I felt like this was like... I felt like I was coming home. Because I knew that there was going to be problems at the church. Um, but now I knew that, that I was equipped. That I knew my own... That I, that, I, that I had a better, much better idea of what happened to me. How to describe it. How to talk about it. And I really felt like time to, time to get down to work. And, and connect with people. And, and make stuff real. Um, so the last two years, I guess you could say my work has been like the most concentrated, super concentrated. Um, and just again, working a lot with, uh, Genia on, uh, on the model, the standard, uh, the standard model of memetics, um, as well as the Portal Mountain project. And for me, it's it's really been a healing journey as well, being able to let go of old traumas. And I, I find that I'm much, at this point, I'm much more comfortable with people, um, like way more than, than a few years back. Um, and even, even way, way before that, uh, when I was just generally described as an introvert, um, very analytical, I called myself a logician. That's the way that I thought of myself, was that I, I could figure anything out. <clears throat> but I didn't see this one coming. And this, I would say, is definitely the, uh, the expected and uh, progression or result of uh, the, I guess you could say, logic that I was following. Yep, so I was very uh, trying to be aware and concerned about uh, global politics and, and power and the, how that kind of stuff works. 
uh, shadow government, deep state, whatever. But it certainly led to its conclusion. Uh, in other words, it hit, hit, it hit the limit of its scope. And that's what happened to me on that beach five years ago. So, although it's been difficult, um, I do enjoy uh, aspects of church community. Um, I like being around people. I know that people are broken and damaged and, and that we really need to be intentionally discipling, but um, at the same time, like relationships are important to build and I'm really thankful for my church. Um, just that, you know, that it's not perfect and that, um, that it's also small enough that, that people uh, hopefully will be looking for help and looking to uh, directly work together and work with people that you know and um, with a much larger church I'm sure I would just get lost in the in that kind of bureaucracy I don't, I don't like that idea uh, so I'm thankful for the size of my church I think it's like 300 members something like that So what the church is doing <clears throat> is only a small portion of what it could be doing. So typically it will focus on purely on Bible study or uh, like so sermon preaching on, on Bible or whatever. Um, and that's great. So this is like this is like the fundamental guild. This is teaching the core of what holds things together. So, but the thing is, society has so many more needs, and the church, honestly, as far as I know, is the only institution, aside from some, like, government community center, that's your competition, basically, uh, an institution for, for connecting, for connecting trust, for establishing trust, um, for um, encouraging and even facilitating uh, um, like I guess platforms of of connection between people like so like for markets so like for Uber uh, as an example uh, just ride sharing um, or however other ways people connect together like this is um, probably a pretty good uh, goal for government would be to fac help facilitate that kind of stuff um, if not that's like the only good reason for their their existence is to uh, to bootstrap uh, I guess networks of trust and and community to boot, help bootstrap community uh, to take care of the body of all in all its constraints and all of its needs <clears throat> so part of the fundamental guild ha is to has to be able to um, convey this Uh, that that there is this whole body of constraints which need to be taken care of and so so we have this this idea coming up again of the organ deharvesting plant um, which is uh, which is I mean what the church should be as well um, so in cases like where uh, restaurants have become the, the food prep for you, the preparation of food, uh, and even the purchasing, like the, the shopping for, the selection of, like all these things handled, um, that's an organ which has been harvested from you. Um, and the government would do well to help people to de-harvest their organs But at any rate, 
um, this is what the church should be doing, obviously. Um, and this is why we are describing a system of guilds and how I envision for the church uh, is to benefit uh, massively because presumably the church is already um, into building uh, trust networks and especially ideally the this kind of coherence uh, awareness of coherence built into that trust uh, which is great that's a, a great and very special augmentation so if somebody has a skill like mechanics and somebody needs their car their oil change or whatever like it's such a simple easy example for why the a church or a community center should be matchmaking and I argue especially a church because uh, with membership you can uh, you can kind of validate uh, along this uh, this this uh, degrees of coherence um, at least that's kind of the implied purpose of of even having a church uh, to build the kingdom of God and to come closer to God uh, to know God better um, and what is God's kingdom if not all that's before us? Uh, whatever we... Um, whatever we have uh, responsibility for. Whatever we can take responsibility for. <coughs> Checking the time, it's about 11 o'clock at night. Uh, my hands are cold, but the rest of me is warm. I'm just kind of pacing out here on the balcony. I'm hoping I can get through the church section. Uh, and what are we at? So we're at about one hour of recording so far. I believe I had about half hour earlier, so about an hour and a half. Um, so we're at about a 16 or 17th hour. Uh, which is interesting uh, lots of material and it's good um, just processing through it and and uh, especially as I, I know I'm gonna have to cut out maybe about a quarter of this uh, wherever there's kind of wandering and stuff and me explaining stuff to myself like right now I may not want it <coughs> or re-explaining some kind of things which aren't that important uh, maybe isn't necessary <coughs> So the church is in a fairly unique position to have a really high quality um, um, trust facilitation uh, network going on, a service to the network. So facilitating the different, uh, say like trades, or we could call them guilds, um, different, uh, say like just the, the so you're you're creating an economy of of the body of Christ. You're you're actually acknowledging that there's an economy of uh, potentially goods and services, which can be some of which can be produced in so-called in-house. So within the church, within your range, and so this is a this is a case where you can use trust to um, accept a service like an oil change or something from somebody. Uh, who is a member of your church, you could say, uh, or or who otherwise is a friend of yours, anyways. Um. <clears throat> so the church is in a unique position uh, to actually act, capitalize, you could say, or act upon that. Um, this is why one of the reasons why and I've, I've talked to my pastor about this that I, I think that's a really important uh, potential goal or, or use or um, 
ministry for the church would be like just matchmaking even um, and just I mean there's not a lot of sto area for storage but some things are really don't take up space and values uh, are high value so I mean you could um, store things and and try to try to give things away like just accept high value items and and just try and give them away to the to the community like the church the church community So, how this relates to my work that I've been doing, um, specifically it could be uh, relayed to you uh, by pointing to the DEC protocol. Um, so what we've been doing with the DEC protocol uh, is, is trying to figure out how to capture, how to capture the, the database, like the, how to capture the data, the information, uh, these externalized symbolic expressions. Uh, of uh, so giving instructions and various other things um, so this is an external memory of of the of bit of parts processes bits uh, data of the neurological and sociological operating systems So really one of the things you want to be able to do is, is transmit instructions and also to be able to intentionally set up this kind of discipleship atmosphere where you do have instructions available and so you have people testing out things and, and uh, there has to be a kind of practical aspect of skill. Um, so you're taking a model and you're acting it out, you're checking how does that model work. Uh, and you're in turn learning about the about reality, a facet of reality, a facet of behavior, your learning process. So by kind of by giving a view into the into the world of the of the church, um, I'm kind of able to 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 uh, to fill in more details of what what kind of what organization looks like, um, and of course no church is perfect, and of course as you'd expect, um, not much of this is formalized with the kind of rigor that I'm that I'm going through here uh, to be able to, to say what is a protocol, how do you make programs, um, how do you express these things, how do you load them, how do you run them. So the the idea was to help to kind of bootstrap this this uh, this guild system um, with a so 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 the church has a directory. This is kind of like a superconductor protocol. 
uh, you're basically creating a try intentionally trying to create a concentration point of uh, both trust and um, and bootstrapping materials so protocols uh, yeah bootstrapping protocols or protocols relevant to bootstrapping so your core basically your core set of protocols <coughs> So this is kind of a difficult environment to get people to, to participate in, uh, doing intentional things, uh, creating a community um, in this way where you are uh, trying to fit into your time and schedule even to, to, do, to do and practice skills. <coughs> so there's kind of a chicken and egg problem here if you're expecting to get an economic boost out of it. Um, which, which can then offset your, your uh, uh, necessity to work so many hours. Um, you're going to have to try and start that up while being already strapped for time. Um, <clears throat> this is just a common thing. People have filled up their schedules to the brim uh, with work and other business. Um, and most often uh, to to just keep paying debt like there's no there's no stopping built into it uh, no break well vacation whatever uh, but yeah the system does not stop <coughs> So the way that I'm looking at my church right now is is as a facet of the uh, meta or meta religion, um, but as far as the, the the building itself and the people and the relationships there, um, the coherence is fairly low as expected. Um, and of course, any. Uh, dysmorphic state has uh, potential to move towards isomorphism <coughs> and so that's kind of just the way that I look at it at my church I'm uh, just again thankful to have it that I like people there are nice uh, good relationships um, and even quite a few I've found who are very much intentional and alive with the spirit um, and just driven So it's hard to expect some kind of, uh, like, um, really big support from the church as far as, like, actually figuring out how to execute this stuff, even if, even if it's agreed with in theory, uh, or in principle, uh, that we should be having community, we should be connecting, we should be doing all this stuff, uh, helping each other out instead of buying stuff, uh, or paying for services outside. Uh, it's kind of like, it should be a pretty seamless uh, first choice, and if it's not, if the church that can't do something well, then, uh, you know, give your money out, just send your money out there. Um, so that's kind of a potential I see 
uh, with the church uh, moving towards isomorphism. I, it's just that there is uh, so much more to the church than than the, the niche that it that it tends to fill, which again is typically uh, purely theoretical study or uh, these kind of disembodied acts of charity or whatever. Um, but I, I do think it is important to connect with people, especially like on a weekly basis. And uh, so as I mentioned, I do go attend uh, two other small groups and currently do, well, you could say three a week because, yeah, because one of them is Alpha. There's a, pro a program called Alpha. Uh, millions of people have attended this kind of stuff worldwide, whatever. Um, but our church hosts it every year, so... Uh, the last three years I've been attending. Uh, but anyways, I love the discussion. It's nice to get around a table and just you have people of different perspectives who are just talking about spirituality and about life. <clears throat> so as an institution, it's great. Um, it's very much dependent on the quality of the people and, and uh, the leaders and all that, like to be able to help to keep things uh, very lively, uh, very interesting. And that's church. <laughs>